Hi, my name is Susan Henry. I'm the senior chair of the Bun, and I am now on the um, being. So we we lead on the being safe. We lead on the on being safe. And it's part of the being me strategy. And it's part of, part of the uh, being me strategy. Yeah. And and. Can I introduce yourself? Of course, yeah. Um, so my name's uh, Leah Birch. I'm a lecturer and researcher at Liverpool Hope University. Um, and I am, like yourself, incredibly passionate about disability hate crime um, and, and making a difference and trying to um, you know, think about ways that we can provide better support and challenge it in the future. Thank you. And you want to ask Leah because she is part of the Being Safe task group. Mm -hmm. Do you want to ask her about what her part is within the task group? Um, and what she's doing? What you, what you do is, is a part of that, of what you do? Yeah, so um, the, the Being Safe uh, task force um, so my role, um, I think I've only been to a couple of meetings so far, um, but it was really to try and introduce the disability hate crime toolkit um, that, that we're working on um, and, and get a steering group together to try and develop that toolkit. Um, and then it's, you know, it's great being part of such a good group and um, the task force and learning about what everyone else is doing. Um, you know, in the northwest area relating to hate crime. And um, there's lots of amazing work being done, isn't there? And so it's always good to, you know, learn from all of that positive practice. How important, do you want to ask Leah, how important is it that we spread awareness about hate crimes? Well, uh, um, I like to say, why is it important that to spread that word for disability. Spread awareness. Spread, spread awareness. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, we know that a lot of disability hate crimes, especially, don't get reported um, and uh, reported to the police. So there's, there's a lot of disability hate crime that happens. Um, and we know it happens, but we don't really know that much about it. And so it's really important that we uh, raise awareness about disability hate crime and, and all the different types of things that that might be. Um, so the different kind of forms of hate crime um, to support disabled people um, in knowing how to report their experiences and, and, and really giving people the confidence that, you know, this, this negative thing that's happened to them um, is something that they can report to the police. Um, and I think as well, raising awareness, it's not just raising awareness for disabled people, is it? It's also, you know, wider people in the community, family, carers, support workers, you know, various professionals. Um, we all need to do our part, don't we, to, to understand disability hate crime and to challenge it. Could you um, ask Leah for the audience just to say what is hate crime? What is hate crime? Uh, what is hate crime? Yeah, so that's something that we we've spoken about quite a lot before, haven't we? Um, because it's it's a it's hate crime is something that we talk about all the time. Um, but actually, I think we all maybe have different understandings of it. Um, and what one person might class as a hate crime might be different um, to what someone else does. Um, but a hate crime, you know, generally is a, an incident and a crime that's committed against someone um, based upon their identity. Um, so a disability hate crime would be uh, where someone's been targeted um, because they are disabled. So because someone um, has hostility or hate towards that person or dislike uh, because of their disability. So just going on from that, um, we can we talk about Amy? 
Yeah, yeah, because that would be really good. So Amy was a victim a couple of years ago now. She came along to our friendship groups. And what happened was it was the first time she'd ever got on a bus. Um, mm -hmm. Mum was very worried about letting her go in on a bus. It was the first time. So it was a really brave move for Amy to get on the bus for the first time and get it on her own. Um, for people with learning disabilities, um, you know, they just need that support, that extra support when they're first starting out in their independent traveling journey. So we've got we've got Amy already. She's come into the friendship group on a night time and on her way home when she got off the bus, she was greeted by lots of teenagers that um, threw hate towards her and called her names, wouldn't let her pass to the point where she was frightened again and now well you know she's she has over the year you know over the last couple of years built up her confidence and she is getting on the bus again but for some if that would have happened that would have completely crushed them and they would never have been able to get on you know on public transport again and um you know it's so important that we i think getting to younger the younger generation and we'll go on to that in a minute because susan does some amazing work within schools i do that we'll talk about but um you know what 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 do you think about that because like, we often think that it's probably the teenagers that are the perpetrators but actually where does that come from does that come from their parents you know this the, the behaviour towards people with learning disabilities. Maybe. You know, we, what's your opinion? Yeah, I think um, it, it comes from a lot of, you know, society's attitudes towards disabled people, doesn't it? So, um, and Susan, I know you've spoken about this quite a lot in the past about people not recognizing people with learning disabilities that's well. right and i did a campaign once um in 2012 and that was called get me when they go out in the community to get their, their faces to be recognized and show them we are human beings as well and anyone else yeah absolutely and that's really important isn't it because I think um, if we're not treating disabled people like human beings, um, you know, whether that's attitudes, whether that's how disabled people are represented, you know, in media, um, it all impacts and influences people's behaviour, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and so I think the campaign that you did is, is you know, really important in in trying to tackle some of those negative attitudes yeah and I, um, yeah and i think you know i think young people um there's so many things that can influence their their behavior isn't there and obviously education plays such a massive role in shaping young people's attitudes um and you know shaping young people as the next generation um and so that definitely, uh, you know, we'll talk about it in a minute, but the work that you're doing at LEAP One yeah. um, is, is vital for that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I think we also need to look at one thing that I'm quite passionate about is how media, so whether the news or TV programmes, films, um, how they represent disabled people. Yeah. Um, and actually, I think negative representations can and, all, and also in newspapers as well can I bring newspaper for that for that for that get me as well yeah uh, telling them what it's like how I felt about um what happened to me past you know as it were as I said that I mean the way when I was younger I mean yeah. yeah 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 and so it's important isn't it to yeah. because there are lots of negative representations it's, in, it's important to get more positive stories out there as well isn't it definitely yeah and also that um if i do forget we are human beings and anyone else we are um the part of the human race and and also being quite equal yeah absolutely yeah, equal mm -hmm. is that you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You should be. It, 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 it's um, people can do stuff like any other 
people can do, like go out to go out learning how to drive or go have a place of your own or have mm-hmm. a new job, things like that. Yeah. And I, th- I think society could learn a lot from people who learn a disabilities, in my in my opinion. You I, know? I think like it's like this because I think it's because it, it, society has been brought up as a social model of disability and that's why it's been brought up. Yeah, absolutely. So recognising the problems and the barriers within society and yeah. not within individual people, yeah. Can we go, do you want to say a little bit about what you do within schools? Um, well, okay, um, I'm one of the bullies that in, um, go out to different, different schools, year six primary schools, and we show people what is hate crime to different to mate crime. Mm-hmm. So, and that's what we do as well, because mate crime is when somebody's in the street walking it to orders and stuff like that. And um, that's what mate crime is. It, 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 what we're trying to do is, it's that personal gain. They pretend to be a friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I just pick up on the mate crime bit? Because we went to a conference, hate crime conference on Monday. Oh, we did, yes, right, we did. We did, didn't we? Yeah. And what was mentioned about mate crime um, kind of made me really think because people, I, with, people I, with autism yeah. really struggle with it being called mate crime. I think because autism don't... Um, understand that it's because they don't understand it we need someone standing up and tell them what mate crime is well it's the word that they use ah. so it's the word mate mate crime. yeah uh, because it, it that, that person it, 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 it can be a friend so working up a, a, a and, and and then also to make it to make them a friend and, mm-hmm. and and also it's about it give it's like it is a pretend you for, be a friend. They do pretend to be your friend, and it's the but it's the word. It's, it's so the word of not... mate. It's, it's it's the same name of mate. Yeah. Is a friend. Yeah. yeah so f- that's quite confusing for somebody with autism. Yeah. Because the the word mates in there. So. Yeah. I don't know what what's your opinion on that you know because they people with autism are thinking oh they're, they're our mates yeah I think so when um when I did work with with you in the past and I think how you separate out mate crime and hate crime can be really useful um for you know recognizing hate crime um as you know bullying um as that kind of behavior and that mate crime is about as you said fake friends you know taking advantage of this this fake friendship um and and so but something that that i i think we need to do is that we need to kind of give people options on how to make sense of these things so it's yeah maybe we need to have more of a conversation with um, people with autism about yeah. what what that kind of relationship means to them um, yeah. because I think a lot of it, even with hate crime I think the way that we talk about hate crime and you know eat that label of hate crime can put a lot of people off can't it yeah um, and so I guess what you know what's come out from that conference is that maybe mate crime puts some people off as well and is, is maybe a bit confusing um, but I think the only way that we can really kind of move past that is by talking to people with autism and, um, you know, seeing where their experience fits um, with what you understand as, as mate crime, because I think it's it's such an important um, label to yeah. to encourage people to recognise that behaviour as as bad and something that they they should be able to report. Yeah, um, and your drama performances really highlight that, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So why why did we start the drama performance, Susan? Do you want to say what, um, what, what was the reason we started those? 
because of Claire. I think it because of Claire O'Brien. Yeah, no, no, no. Sorry, it just so one of our members was a, a victim, wasn't she? Yeah. 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 Um I think it's to do with you need to do like your body language. Well, it was one of our, our members was a victim of yeah. hate crime and mate crime, actually. Um, so both you know, different occasions, different people. Um, and it, that's the reason we go into schools because we want to make a difference, didn't we? Yeah. Because the, the people that actually took advantage of our members were teenagers. So that was the reason why I wanted to go into schools. So it was year six, which is age 10, 11. And yeah. so it was just that difference before they went into the high school that they would recognise, you know, before they get to teenage years. Um, yeah. So we're going, we are going to be restarting that in the new year in 2022. Oh, now we can. Now we're allowed back into schools again. Yeah. So that will begin. Oh, that's fantastic. I bet you can't wait, Susan, to get back out. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> So we wanted, we'd, we'd love to just ask you, Leah, just a little bit about your toolkit. What's, what, how are you doing it? What, yeah, <coughs> you want to tell the audience really a little bit about the toolkit? Yeah, definitely. So the toolkit, um, it's, it, it's not, so it's not just my toolkit. So it's, you know, a steering group that we've got together. Um, and Susan, you're, you know, you're part of that group as well, aren't you? And it's something that we're working together to produce a toolkit, something that's on the internet that people can use to learn about disability hate crime, um, to learn about how to report it, um, to know how to get more support um, if it's happening to them. Um, and also there's going to be sections on the toolkit that will provide resources for teachers um, and you know carers or support workers as well so people that are working with disabled people um, to you know try and train them up a little bit as well on what hate crime is um, so it's something that we're still at the very beginning really of putting together aren't we um, so at the moment we're, we're meeting kind of every five or six weeks on zoom um, and talking about some key issues that, that members think. Um, so we've spoke about reporting, we've spoke about, you know, even just understanding what a hate crime is and, you know, the different kind of examples that that might be. Um, and the, the aim is that we have all of these discussions and then we create resources that are more accessible um, not just for disabled people but for people working you know with disabled people um, and as I said you know schools and um, police officers is something that a lot of members have been quite keen on developing resources for so that police officers know um, have that better awareness about disability um, and how disability hate crime might be a little bit different to other kinds of hate crime. Um, so, you know, mate crime is a really good example of that, isn't it? How sometimes, it, you know, hate crimes and mate crimes towards disabled people might not happen as often to other people. Um, so it's still very much a work in progress. Um, and it's, it's really nice, actually, I think every meeting that we have as a group, um, the the direction of the toolkit develops that little bit more um, and it's so it's something that I kind of came to members with this is an idea you know like a broad idea of what I want to do um, but we're very much working together on actually what that might look like um, and we're hoping to launch it next year uh, next summer time um, so we're going to you know, we'll have spent a good year on it by, at that point, which I think is really important as well. Um, you know, not to rush and get something out there that isn't very useful, but to spend a lot of time um, working on it together. Uh, that, that was going to be my next question. When's it going to be launched? And you'd be yeah. to it. But I was just thinking maybe, you know, we could do a big launch of it this time next year in Hate Crime Awareness Week would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a bit, a bit later than summer, but I just think given, you know, that 
how important it is to highlight it. it would be amazing if we could do a full launch in you know hate crime awareness week like 2022 yeah absolutely it quite it gives us more of a um like a, a proper date to work towards as well doesn't it because at the yeah. moment we keep saying yes yeah, summer summer next year um but actually it gives us a goal yeah um, to work towards and and I do think even if it does it even if it is a little bit later so you know October time um I think that just gives us that little bit longer as well to make sure it's it's what we want um and, and test it I guess as well yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So all of the resources that are produced, um, so I'll be producing a lot of the resources, but we'll be talking about those as a group and, and having conversations about how we can develop them, um, how we can make them more accessible. Um, and, and something that, Susan, I can't remember if it was you that, that mentioned it in the last meeting, but maybe having some podcasts available mm. um, on the toolkit as well. So not just having, um, you know, things that people can read, but having, you know, videos and, and podcasts. Um, well, so I, get, I thought it might be a lot easier because people might not be able to read or write. Absolutely. It just give, it just makes it, it gives people more of a choice about how they engage with the toolkit, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I would like to, if, if somebody was um, a victim of hate crime, what would they do? Because we, I know we'll, we'll go on to the next question in a minute, which is about the Liverpool Police and how amazing their disability awareness training that you mentioned has been. Mm -hmm. But if somebody was a victim of hate crime with a learning disability, what, what would we advise them to do? In, first of all, if it was happening maybe straight away, and then secondly, if it's already happened or how to recognise it even. Yeah, I think that's really key, isn't it? So it can take a, a while to, you know, something's happened. And then actually sometimes we have to come away from that situation and, and really think about it and, and figure out what that, you know, what that was, whether it was a hate crime. Um, if something's happening in the moment, um, definitely, you know, the advice would be to phone uh, 999 if it's, you know, if you're in danger, um, if you need that support urgently. Um, and, and depending where you are as well, um, it might be that if you're out and about in the city centre or in the town, there might be safe places that you can go to. Um, so asking, you know, Go, maybe going into a shop and talking to a member of staff or if you're on a bus you know I meant talking to the bus driver um I think what's really key and what I'm really um and I think you'd agree is that that people don't you know keep it in themselves um talk to someone whether that's a friend um, a support worker, whether that's other members at Leap One or, you know, other organisations, if you're ever confused about whether something is a hate crime and whether you can report it, um, just talk, you know, ask, ask other people what they think as well. Um, but I do think that if you are in doubt, it's still important to try and report that experience. Um, so whether that's through a, a secondary reporting centre, you can do it online, um, you can phone 111. Um, I think Hate UK, that's another one, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. Um, a free phone line as well that you can get support from there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it, I think it's better to report it, even if you're not sure, um, because we know that you know a lot of bad things can happen to disabled people um, and that that can build up um, and so if we've got the reports of that you can get a bit of a better picture of what's going on yeah definitely yeah. so yeah we we are trying to get some more police officers trained in leads around disability awareness and I know that when you've been coming along to the being safe task group meetings that the police in Liverpool have a really good system in place 
Um, and I don't know if you want to just say a little bit about that, maybe, because we're looking to see if it can be replicated here. Yeah, absolutely. So it's something that I, I learned about doing the, the PhD research, but um, people first Merseyside have got quite close connections with their um, hate crime coordinators in, in that area. Um, and they develop a lot of training together. So they'll go to, you know, different places of work, um, they'll go to other organisations and train people about what disability hate crime is. And I think what's really good is that they develop that training together. Um, so it means that people with learning disabilities are shaping that training. Um, and it means then that the hate crime coordinators are learning from disabled people. Um, so how, you know, how important is that? How important is it that they learn from people with learning disabilities and lived experience of, of, of hate crimes? It's so important. I don't really understand how it can happen without doing that. Um, it's something that that with with my research that I did, um, you know, there was so much research about disability hate crime that was much more talking about what a hate crime is. Um, you know, it was about policy and all of that's really important. But for me, it was it was so much more important to come and talk to people um, and see what hate crime is, you know, within their lives. Um, that, you know, we can talk about hate crime all day, but if that doesn't fit with what's happening to people um, in their lives, then it's it's useless, isn't it? Yeah, something that you just said that I really, really made me think was um, we had a one of our members on a bus um, mm -hmm. during Black Lives Matter um, and she got onto a bus and the teenagers started shouting, oh, Rastafari, she's a mixed race lady and started shouting that to her. And then she went and told a support worker and a support worker had said, no, that's not a hate crime. It's not a hate crime. And she didn't actually recognise that as a hate crime. She just said, oh, these kids were just shouting that at me when I got on the bus. Yeah. But both of them, you know, neither one of them said, oh, no, it's not a hate crime, when actually it quite clearly was. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's, I think there's so many cases of that, isn't there, that, you know, it yeah. happens and, and it just doesn't get recognised. Um, I think it's a real shame that, that the support worker didn't recognize that as well um and I think it just really proves doesn't it that we need to produce some some training you know some resource that can can educate support workers um on on what that is and and being able to recognize that with the people that they're supporting yeah absolutely mm -hmm. Susan have you got any last words for Leah thank you <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. That's good enough for me. Is there anything, last comment you want to say, Leah? I mean, it's been amazing having you on. And so, you know, I just appreciate you giving us some time. I think it's so important to raise awareness of hate, disability hate crime, isn't it? And, yeah. and make sure that people are safe when they go out. Yeah, absolutely. I think just, I mean, the work that you do at Leet One is, you know, incredible. And Susan, the work that you've done, I know you've been training police officers and, um, you know, keeping up all of that. But I think I'm really passionate about as well, you know, as a researcher, um, that we need to be talking to each other. Um, yeah. So much research goes on that doesn't include disabled people. And I think for a topic like hate crime, that's just not good enough. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, better collaborations between organisations like yours and, and researchers um, is, is just really, really important to me. And I think we need to encourage that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. How many, just on that note, just before we wrap up, how many police officers did you train in lockdown? 72. 72 police officers um and what did they say after the training susan they really enjoyed it yeah yeah but that's so important as well because that's 72 police officers that are working in the community 
that now have a better understanding of learning disability, um, which means that, you know, you've hopefully helped them support other people. Um, mm-hmm. So the impacts of stuff like that is just huge, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Amazing. Well done, Susan. Thank you. Yeah. I, actually, I'm still waiting that trade. Is there any more training coming up? Yeah, we're pushing it. <laughs> we want you to do more. It's so important, so important, vital, really vital nice. work. Thank you so much. Um, Susan, do you want to thank Leah? I know you already have once. But... I'll, I'll say it again then. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, thank you, Susan. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing more of your podcasts. Okay. Amazing. Thank you, Leah. Uh, No worries. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.